Okay, guys, with it being spring break, I didn't know if we'd have very many people on here, and we do have a full house, so awesome. Um, I can only see one, there's only one person who's alive on here tonight. Now, thank you, Karen. I'm glad to see you tonight. I guess everybody else is spring breaking on their, <laughs> their video, live videos with us tonight. Oh, there's, I see a few. Oh, there's Christia, Pam, Daisha. Well, I saw y'all for a second. <laughs> oh, there's Angie. Okay. So, um, it does help when I can see at least one person that way. I know I'm not frozen. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> there's Marianne. Okay. So tonight we're going to, we're going to talk about something we've talked about once before, probably talked about it more than once before, but I am, um, I'm going to hit on this again because, um, I was thinking about today, I'm almost at five and a half years with this business of uh, having done, you know, tried, I would say, maybe I haven't tried everything, <laughs> but if it crosses my mind and it might, that it might be a good idea, I've tried it as far as like, what would be a good way to uh, market myself, market this business, brand myself, uh, Compliant testimonies, everything from compliant testimonies to, um, you know, using solely social media to doing live meetings to doing online meetings. I feel like I've tried, it seems like everything. And really what it comes down to is that everything that you try fits into, I don't know if it fits into this category. Maybe I'm labeling it wrong. Everything you try comes down to one thing. You're planting seeds and then later you're harvesting. And if you're not good at either one of those, then you're not going to ever have success in this business. If you, and I'm not saying inherently not good. I guess what I should say is if you haven't learned to focus specifically on those two things, if you're all about planting seeds and you never harvest, or if you're all about trying to harvest, but you haven't planted the seeds, you understand that these two things you have to do one and then the other and that it doesn't have to be that you do it in seasons. So it's not like, well, in March I'm going to plant seeds so that in April I can harvest. Really it comes down to each person has their seasons. Each prospect has the seasons that they go through in relation to how you reach out to them. So some people are not going to follow up. I don't mean we as ambassadors, but some people that you reach out to some prospects I know are not going to fit into the mold that I'm about to describe because sometimes you're going to reach out to the, a person that the first time you reach out to them, they've never heard about Plexus. And the very first time you talk to them, they're going to say, absolutely, let's do this. Sign me up. But that's absolutely the exception to the rule, right? We know that the majority need exposure to what we do. We have to bring their defenses down. They have to bring their defenses down and realize that you're not going to do anything sketchy, that Plexus is not sketchy, that we actually have something that does work, uh, that the comp plan is, you know, above average, that the products are above average. I'm saying, I know we know this, ours are exceptionally above in both areas, but we have to let people understand. We have to get people to that place of understanding that they're, they're, they are getting into something that is above average on the safe scale in every area because there's just a lot of stuff going on out there in these days with, you know, the internet's by golly, you know, that could not be, that might not be safe things to get your uh, family, your credit card, your uh, friends and acquaintances tied up into. Okay. So I want you to start thinking about the business, the business part of the business instead of the product part of the business. I want you to start thinking about the business in terms of sowing the seeds and harvesting. And so I'm going to take us through this uh, starting on Monday. I'm going to take us through, we've done this once before, but the participation level, it was totally dependent on uh, the fact that I didn't promote it well. and. Um, and also um, the time of the year that it was, but now should be a perfect time to try this. Um, we're gonna do like a cold messaging and following up seven day thing. But the thing I want you to do, because it's, it seems like 
every week I'm coming up with something new to talk to you guys about on a Zoom. It really comes down to there aren't that many actual topics. It's just that I have new ideas and ways to spin it, ways to present it. Um, in fact, sometimes I think, oh my God, how will I ever come up with another top, another topic? And they're not, they're not that actually varied of topics. They're just varieties of the same topic. So I want you to decomplicate things in your brain and realize that every prospect that you're reaching out to and, and this, every prospect that you're reaching out to in regards to this is either someone you're planting a seed with or you're trying to bring in the harvest in regards to prospecting this person. Also, I want you to think about the fact that when we do a seven day challenge, if it works well for you, and this is the part I beat my head up against the wall, I just beat my head up against the wall when I think about this, but it's because we're so distracted by every, every shiny thing that comes into our, you know, sphere of sight or our, our line of sight, we get so distracted. But if you do this seven days and the ones who did it last time, they were like, that was so good. We should do it again. And I'm like, we sure should. Like if it worked well for you, the next Monday is a great opportunity. <laughs> I don't have to, you see what I'm saying? I don't have to put post it every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in order. It stays there. It's on our team page. If you like it, grab it, make it part of your routine. Actually, I think that's probably part of my issue is I make it be like, oh, that is, you didn't like that? Then let's turn it blue and do it like this. Add some jello. Oh, you don't like that? Let's do, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, maybe you'd like it if it was fizzy. It really comes down to sowing seeds, taking in the harvest, okay? So, this next week, as we go through, it's just seven days worth of possible ways to reach out to people. It's going to be give you examples of what to say. If you've never done this with us, and many of you, this will be the case because I'm looking at your names and I know you didn't do this with us last time. If this is the first time you've done this, or if you kind of did it as my mom would say, no, I'm not going to say what my mom would say. If you halfway did it, my mom has a tacky word for that. If you halfway did it last time, then this time, if you'll give it your all effort, especially since we are in springtime, this is a beautiful time to do this. Springtime, March, April, May, these are the most beautiful months of the year for bringing them in, bringing them in. It's before summer. Um, before people get too busy. So this is a perfect time to do one of these. And I'm going to repeat myself because y'all know how I am. If you like it, there's no reason you can't just repeat it the following week. In fact, if I was just going to be the boss of everybody, I'd be like, Hey, I got an idea. Let's duplicate what you did last week for the rest of the year. Because at the end of the year, if you duplicate and do that, and don't let your attention span be like, I did it for seven days and I'm a mosquito and I can't think, now I have to think about something else. If you will do what we're about to do for seven days for the rest of the year, you will rank advance probably rapidly. So I don't know whether that's going to, the thought of that scares you. I don't mean the rank advancing, whether the thought of doing something in repeat freaks you out because you think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be doing the same thing over and over again. But really the people who are consistent in this business are the ones who get the results, aren't they? The ones who are like, okay, I have a thing. This is what I do on Mondays. This is what I do on Tuesdays, so on and so forth. So this really, this next, the seven day challenge or seven day, whatever you want to call it, I'm gonna name it right now. I think it's called cold messaging and follow-up challenge. This thing that we're gonna do if you like it, not only should you do it, you should duplicate it and you should teach it to your team. And you should tell it to them just in the same way that I did. If this works for you, don't let it float past you on your screen. Save it to the notes in your phone. That's what happens on our team pages. We have really good ideas that help, you know, maybe 25% of you get kicked into gear and rank advance to the next rank investment. And then you think, what am I gonna do now? I've already done that. Mm -mm. Had a, I had a weird conversation with someone about this kind of thing so today, so this will give you an idea. 
So here we go. This is what it says. I've already posted it on a butterfly page. Do you get paralyzed when it comes to reaching out to someone about plexus for the first time? Does it bother you when you get ignored? Do you feel defeated when someone tells you no? Do you find yourself not knowing what to say in reaching out or following up so instead you just stay silent? More than any other obstacle, I see cold messaging and follow-ups tripping up more people than any other thing in our business and uh, want to help you conquer that. So starting on Monday, we will have a seven-day cold messaging and follow-up challenge. Each day, we will target three specific areas. One, reaching out to someone new. Two, building relationship with someone who has said no. Three, following up with someone who has expressed interest at some point. Each day I will give you samples of what to send and you can tweak it to sound more like you. It's important to note, oops, it went away, sorry. It's important to note that for many of you, this will feel uncomfortable. That's okay, let it. The first time you rode a bike, it wasn't easy. The first time you learned to drive a car, it wasn't easy. Now both are second nature to you and this will get to that point too. Just like riding a bike and driving a car, the more you put these principles into action, the easier it will become. If you would like to participate in this seven day challenge, I'm going to ask you to pre-commit by commenting, I'm in, below. I'll make a list of those who commit and I will hold you accountable each day to complete the challenges. Unlike previous challenges, I will not be doing a giveaway for this and here's why. I want you to do this for you. I want your hard work and the proof that you can conquer your fears to be your reward because no prize or amount of money could hold a candle to that. Do this for you. Proof to yourself that you've got what it takes to be successful in this business. The fortune is in the follow-up. So, if you're ready, oh wow, I've already got a bunch of people saying I'm in. Boom, okay. If you're ready, the one reason you need to say I'm in is so that you're, you're going to automatically see the posts coming. It'll automatically notify you uh, in that thread. If you're on another one of my groups, I'll um, share all this stuff with you guys too. So if you're sitting there wondering if it's going to happen, how are we going to know what she's talking about? Um, does anybody have any questions about this so far? Oh gosh, the chat is lit up over here and I'm not paying any attention. Oh. Okay, is everybody saying I'm in? Okay. You know what, I kinda wanna do an experiment. I want everybody to calculate, I want you to write down somewhere, if you know how you ended the month last month, we're at the, you know, we're at payday time of the month, so let's say if you know how your points ended um, last month, let's give it until the end of April to see how your points end if you do this consistently, especially those of you who are gonna are willing to take it on for more than seven days, okay? I'd like for you to see, because there's something about doing, doing anything um, that will, there's something about the fact that you can actually see that it actually made a difference that will project uh, that will propel you to, to continue doing it and to continue trying. Um, while you're doing it, since it is kind of, it's separate from the seven day group that will be in April, it, it's cold messaging, but I want you to keep that in mind the whole time. The fact that you're prospect, prospecting these people, you're planting seeds. If sometimes you want to tweak the wording so that at some point, if one of these people fits into the, fits into the mold of who you would like to uh, invite to the April seven day challenge, um, you should tweak the wording. Now, some people may not be interested in that at all. That's fine. The seven day thing is in and of itself a good whole piece here for you to do. You can do it at all times, whether there's a seven day challenge coming or not. Is everybody comfortable with what I'm saying here? If you want to tweak the wording to make sure that certain people that you're inviting them to get a seven day trial and so on and so forth. Okay. For those of you who are not aware of what I'm talking about, I'm just gonna briefly talk about the seven day trial. It will start April 10th. Uh, you need to be making sure you have people who would be interested in it buying one of the slim, slim seven day trials, uh, going ahead and ordering so that they can actually get involved 
uh, have their product in hand by the time we do that in April. I highly encourage you not to wait till the last minute. Hang on. Do I have any questions about that part? I've got some of the unmuted. Any questions? Okay. What were, what were you telling me earlier about convention? Um, registration is open right now. Registration for convention is open right now? Don't know how long it'll be open. We don't know how long it'll be it's open. Very close to selling out. What's what? It's uh, very close to selling out. Very it's open a thousand spots at the very first of March. And right now it's still open. Think he thinks they opened a thousand extra spots at the beginning of March and he thinks it's still open. So I, yeah, I it's, it's about capped. I mean, it's, it's about capped, like for good cap, yeah, or are they gonna do it's getting really close. It's getting very close. He would know. Uh Les Brown, Carrie Wilkerson. Les Brown and Carrie Wilkerson will be keynotes for convention, both excellent. Um I've seen them both. I've seen Les Brown once, I've seen Carrie on multiple occasions, and they're both very in tune for our, our company and our businesses. Okay. Hmm. I'm talking fast through this tonight. Fast I'm a fast talker. Okay. I decided to start this seven day, this new seven day the cold the cold messaging follow-up thing next week because with it being spring break just get everybody who wants to be in on it if you have some team members that you think would this would help them get kicked off uh you might want to tag them in the comments in on the team page another thing <laughs> um hang on i gotta let it circle back around something floated through my brain while i was saying that a second ago Oh yeah, your people who have joined this month that you want them to be go through an orientation, we will be doing that in the third third of the month. So somewhere starting around the 20th, the last 10 days of the month this month. I will. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do like a Zoom and invite people to that and then also do a group or do a group, I'm not sure, but we're gonna do orientation for new people. It will be brief, it will be, I. Uh, I don't know. Um, it will be brief. I don't want you to call it a training because we're not going to go into enough detail that we scare people. It will be people, even if they just became a wholesale um, ambassador and don't plan to work the business, it would be something that you could uh, tell them about, send them the link to whatever we, however I decide to go about it and um, keep kind of keep your eyes out for that because it will just be a brief. This is what, each product that we have and what it does and it won't be I'm not going to go into major depth that way even if it was someone who's just planning on using the products for themselves you would want to know that right you want to know what X factor is right and then basically tell them um, the, the the most common portion of our business or the most minimal portion of our business which is the power of three in regards to paying for your paying for your own products not, we're not going to teach them about all the ranks, not going to go into all the fluffy talk. It will simply be, this is how you can get your own products paid for. And a lot of people do it by, um, you know, just talking about their new adventure and their new journey on Facebook and just expose their brains to the concept so that many who have joined you because of maybe uh, of the way that you've worded things and really don't plan to ever share, won't feel pressured to share. However, they will know how we go about it. Everybody comfortable with that? All right. When was your anniversary, Aunt Jetty? Did you say your anniversary? How many? Three days ago. Three days ago. How long have you been with the business? Five years. So you beat Trisha Flanagan by three days? Yeah. Je I, saw, I saw Trisha Flanagan's post that she's been she had a happy fifth anniversary to me today. And I thought Jetty's just happened. Did Missy's happen on the same day as you? So my best friend and my husband signed up the same day. Uh, and Trisha, Fl Trisha Flanagan's, she's 
fifth, you know, that's a long time to be friends with people that I didn't even know with Plexus. That's pretty cool, right? Now, I knew Missy before, but, huh? That you didn't know That I didn't know before Plexus? Yeah. How did I, I don't, however I said it. Said people that I didn't know before Plexus. I don't know how I said that. Okay, yes. It's cool to have friends through Plexus that I didn't know at all. Several of you that I didn't know at all prior to Plexus. And now it's like you're in my everyday life. I see the things that you have going on in your lives. And I think that's actually one of the coolest parts of Plexus. If Plexus ever went away, I can't imagine all you people going away. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if something ever happened, I can't imagine that all the people that are in my life because of Plexus would still, would not still be in my life. So cool. Yes. Okay. Hang on. I have people. <laughs> yes. For those of you who are in other groups of mine, I will share the, uh, the seven day challenge and also, uh, the orientation. Be happy to, I don't know that we'll, we'll see how good I am at newbie orientation. We're going to learn, right? We're going to learn how good Lori is at this because I don't do them. I don't do them. The thing, this thing that I'm going to step out and try is something that's going to be brand new to me. Maybe you guys should pray me through this, right? <laughs> okay. You guys do anything uh, fun for... You guys do anything fun for spring break? Is anybody, is anybody even... Ha is everybody in the world having spring break right now? Angie, I do not know that either in my mind because I think that's so weird. I grew up with those girls too. Isn't that funny? I'm just reading. <laughs> Mary, Mary and Delano, shovel snow, power outages, and wear winter clothing. So yeah, not much of a spring break, right? Doesn't feel like spring yet. Okay, so I'm going to pray over you guys. I, I had a a lunch today with a friend of mine who is going through some hardcore stuff in her life and um, some of the stuff that we talked about hang on I'm managing participants gotta mute everybody some of the stuff that we talked about led me to send her to some uh, whole tones music and um, then as I told her about it, I, you know, I always shield myself. Now with you guys, for some reason, I put it out there and just hope whatever you want to believe, you just believe, let the rest of it slide off the wall, you know. Um, you don't have to believe the way I believe. I definitely don't push my beliefs on anybody. Um, I pray over you all and cover you all in the blood of Jesus, but y'all may not even know that I do that, right? Like, you leave, leave sticky with the blood of Jesus. And, you know, I tricked y'all into getting on a phone call so I could do that for y'all. But, uh, I have a, this friend of mine, as I was telling her about it the whole time, I'm thinking she's, she's a very, um, she has strong opinions about things. So I thought, I'm just going to tell her what I feel to be true. And then hopefully this will help her if it's meant for her so on and she says oh i tell her about frequency and she says girl you got to watch this documentary i said really she's like oh yeah it's about the pyramids the egyptian pyramids really she says yeah she says they believe that yeah, they believe that the pyramids were not at all tombs at all because since they hadn't found anything in their tomb like like mummies I mean, there's no dead body parts or no reason. There's no reason to think it was a tomb unless it was just a tomb they built for and no, never buried anybody in. And she said, instead, they think it was, um, it was something to do with frequency, healing energy. Um, the way that the sun, the way that the sun's energy and the aquifers, living water that went, ran underneath it and the energy that they would produce. And they were made out of certain kinds of, granite different kinds of things and i'm sitting there oh excuse me here in southern oklahoma we call it aquifer jay said <laughs> aquifers i don't ever say aquifer i just heard it today and so i'm repeating it um anyway the reason i'm sharing this i don't know why i'm sharing this with all of you i thought it was so interesting that i came home and i said hey we're gonna watch this i'm gonna see what it's about and it doesn't say the part about the 
what they believe might be true until almost at the very end of this documentary. And indeed, it had to do with that the healing body is made up of frequency. And if your frequency is out of line, that that's when disease comes in, even depression comes in. And that frequency, and uh, every time I think about stuff that I think, oh, that would freak people out, I always think, I don't know why I, I even limit God in my mind. Why wouldn't God use frequency? He created it. It's a real thing. So anyway, so I'm going to play our music tonight. Oh, sorry, I'm reading some of these private messages. I do want to tell one other thing. Um, the first time I ever played whole tones on a zoom meeting, we had a divine healing that nobody knows about. Like I said that maybe the next time I said we had a divine healing last time and it's a pri it was private to that person. I, I I'm not going to share tonight even, but we had something happen that night. I didn't know what I was doing. So I had nothing to do with it. Like I just prayed like I normally do played the music. The next day she told me, um, It was an evident one too. It was something like there was evidence that there was a problem and then the evidence was gone. Evidence that had been there for years and then the evidence was gone. So without revealing someone's private issue, I just thought that was super cool. Okay. The documentary, what was it called? I don't remember. The Pyramid Code. Was it the pyramid code? Apparently there's a series of five. I don't know if they're all, I have only watched the first one. And honestly, some of it was hard to understand, not because of brain power, maybe that too, but literally hard to understand their accents. Some of the, some of the people that they interviewed hard to understand, but I believe that this, oh, I won't even get into all that. I have so many, things that rattle around in my head when I watch something like that in regards to the way that mankind has been brainwashed and lied to in regards to all kinds of things like the fact that they were tombs. We've believed that for how long? I don't know if all of you believe it, but they're definitely not tombs. After you watch this, you'll be very convinced of that and why we were told that they were in the first place. It doesn't really make sense. So my, my quest in this life, above all things, it feels like, is for truth in regards to anything that I encounter. If, if you see me researching something, it's not to make, that, make sure that I know that my point is what is truth. Like, well, I believe that, you know, everything is centered around gut health. So I'm going to find all these articles that support my theory. That's not what I want to know about life. I want to know if, if that is indeed my theory, I want to know if it's actually true. Does that make sense? I think so many people research things in a, like, I, I want to support what I've always believed, or I want to support what I've always been told, or what people who I respect a lot have told me. Um, and I don't want to read anything that's contradictory to that because, and I'm like, really? I, I see that in so many people, and I'm not even... It scares me about humanity in general to think that people would rather prove themselves right than find truth. Does that make sense? Yeah, that scares me. It also gives you a lot about and a lot of understanding about human nature and the way research is done around the world. I think the majority of people who go in to research something, even this documentary I watched, I have no idea. They may have some sort of um, weird agenda behind why they, how they figured out what they figured out. I don't ever take anything at face value in regards to a documentary, but it is interesting to see that it's definitely not a tomb. I mean, no, regardless of anything else from there, it definitely wasn't a tomb. Also, it definitely was not pulled up a mountain by ropes. 200 tons were those each block? 200 tons. Those blocks were 200 tons. And one ton is 2,000 pounds. So 200 times 2,000 pounds each one of these rocks that they said that they used to take a rope and pull it up a hill. Right. Why we were lied to about all that stuff. I don't know. Anyway. Okay.
<laughs> they found King Tut in a tomb back in 2012. In it. Oh yeah, that's true. To remember when Toot and Common, we found out his name wasn't Toot. Toot. You remember that going to that? Yeah. We went to some sort of exhibit. All right, I'm way off topic now. Let's pray. At this point in the evening, Jetty's like, it's time for bed, babe, and pat me on the butt and send me upstairs because I start talking about random stuff. This is when I get my best ideas. I pray that if you don't practice heart coherence already, that you will start that tonight. <laughs> God, I just ask that you just, the spirit of truth would settle on us. In regards to all curiosities that we have, that any sort of deceit, that we could see through any sort of deceit. God, I praise you for healing power. I praise you that. I just think it's so cool that healing power literally runs in our veins and it's a matter of the realization and of that. That's the matter is the realization. I think our, our cells and our DNA want to line up with health. And it's really a belief issue. Not a belief of uh, are we worthy to be healed or not a belief of, or have we been good enough to be healed, but a belief that, you know, healing power runs in our veins. God, thank you for revelation. Thank you that you take us deeper and deeper into mysteries of who you are. Thank you as you create a new heart in each one of us. As you mold it. as you mold each one of our hearts. I pray tonight that God is literally softening every heart, molding our hearts to forgiveness, release, Letting go, blessing, releasing, whatever words help you in your head. Thank you, God, that you are not a God of logic. That you are a God of supernatural. That you're the God of miracles. And thank you that we are just part of your family in that way. We don't have to do anything in order to be part of your family. I saw somebody ask for a prayer request. Hang on a second. I'm going to pray over... I guess it's Don. Don who is on here tonight, right? 
Sponsor okay. John. It's Uncle Henry. Says he has stage four cancer. I just want to say a prayer over all disease tonight. Lord, I just pray in your power that you would pluck it all out, all disease out from the core, from the root. Whatever the root is. I mean, oh my gosh, when I think about it, the root of disease can be so many different things. But each situation is probably going to be very different. I just pray over Uncle Henry tonight in regards to whatever the root is in his situation. I pray peace over the family, peace over him as they walk through this. I, play, I pray revelation for him in regards to like the purpose behind what's going on. I mean, why? Not why it happened, but like why it's going on. Not what caused it, but what's to come from it. That's what I mean to say. Command any dark spirit be gone in the name of Jesus. Don, go back and listen to any of the prayer. When I talk about cellular trauma, I'm going to say this again, but rather than you go and listen, listen to this, but cellular trauma, the spirit of trauma, command the spirit of trauma to be gone in the name of Jesus and that every cell in his body would line up with the perfect blood of Christ, with the DNA of Christ. And that the cells would forget the trauma. I think you should pray that over him. I mean, remotely or I don't know if he where, lives where you are, but I think you should pray that over him. Pray against any darkness. Sorry, I'm reading the messages again. Mm. Oh, yeah. Don, remind me to send you an email that I got from someone. I pray over Emily, who's burying her baby tomorrow. God, I just pray that you wrap your arms around her until life begins to make sense again. God, thank you for all these people that have become part of my family. Thank you for the love that they express. Thank you for their open hearts, Lord. Lord, I ask that you prosper their, prosper their businesses 
that you supernaturally join hands with them and link arms with them. Holy Spirit, that you are abundant in their homes, that you have angels posted up in every corner of every room. God, I just call on angels tonight to be ever present in everything that we do to be present with within our marriages that the Holy Spirit be rich between in, in marital relationships and that the Holy Spirit be and that angels be with our children, wherever that they, wherever they go. That their angels are reading it to us from our, our own book that was written about us the book of our life encouraging us God that we feel more and more close to you every single day closer and closer closer every single day Lord that just the knowledge that you're there all the time that you're there in like the magnitude of you being there is there all the time, but that we just have to stop, be still, be quiet, breathe. And experience who you are, experience your love for us, not be so busy and tied up with the world. God, I pray that everybody on this call begins to pray. If Wednesday night is your prayer time, I pray that Wednesday night is the least of your prayer time. I pray that, I pray that you begin to pray within your marriage. I say in my breakthrough training classes, I say, isn't it crazy? I'm going to tell you a statistic. I've shared this before, but I'm going to tell you the statistic, the statistic of, Divorce is 50%. 50% of people who get married will get divorced. The percentage of Christian couples who get married that get divorced is also 50%. It makes no difference. The percentage of couples who pray together out loud on a regular basis is less than 1%. Less than 1%. To me, it blows my mind that it has be, we have allowed, we, not just we, but the world has allowed there to become a culture where it's normal to get naked with people and act freaky, but it's weird to pray with them. God forgive us for that. I mean, wipe us clean from that. I don't want to, I don't want to shake hands with that. And I pray that you don't either. I pray that even if it's significantly weird for you, way incredibly weird for you that you begin praying with your spouse. If it has to start out with you praying quietly and put your hands over there by them while they sleep and evolve into something else. I'm just, I'm just telling you that's where it's at. healthy marriages, healthy partnerships. I mean, where you, you can, you both are strong in the Holy Spirit. You both are strong in your relationship with the Lord first. That's why I believe that spouses who pray stay together because they're both growing stronger and stronger in their relationship with the Lord makes everything more harmonious. I hope it literally, if I haven't said anything that sunk in with you in the last six months that you think about the fact that our culture is that screwed up, that it's weird that we've let it, there be a stigma on us stopping and praying for people, stopping and praying with people, it's even weird to pray with the one that we live with, that we do life with, that we expect to stumble through life with, that we expect to claw our way through life with, and it's become weird to pray with them. 
I just pray that I pray away that stigma in the name of Jesus. If that is some weird spirit, I command it to be gone. I pray that our eyes are opened more and more to truth every single day. I want to know truth. God, I seek after truth more than anything. I seek your face and I want to know the truth. I don't want to know what some author thinks. I don't want to know what some preacher thinks. I want to know what's actually true. I don't want to know about the things that make people feel comfortable if they're not true. It's like the, the deepest seed of my heart's desire, the very deepest seed inside my heart. If there are cover-ups cover and weird brainwashes in regards to beliefs that we have in regards to scripture, God, uncover those things for us. Truth. I lift this all up in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I've got this pulled up. I'm going to flex this thing down today. I'm going to write your email address down. Don, is it your uncle? Yes, no. Oh, he's tapping. Yes. I want y'all to look around. There's no piles in my room anymore, my office. Jetty's not a pile either, are you, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all some we ha sometimes we have